everyone and welcome to this video of what can Silhouette Studio do for the planner in you. I'm going to recap the workshop that I gave at Planifest on the 27th of July and I'm going to start with the painting sent in by Katie of the UK Planner Addicts. So let's open our image. It's a JPG image and I've prepared a PDF full of information on how to get started with Silhouette Studio and if you've read that you'll know that JPG images come into Silhouette Studio at an absolutely huge size. This one is telling us it's 20 inches by around 15 inches high and that's obviously going to be too big to use so let's start by resizing and if we keep our padlock checked here this locks the aspect ratio that means it keeps everything in proportion and we can quickly do a scale of 50 percent and use this icon to center it back to our page you can also resize from the transform panel and that's this tab called scale and we've got exactly the same things here scale by percentage or by specific measurements and remember if you want to keep proportions check the padlock for lock aspect ratio let's make this an even more workable image by cropping away part of the image that we don't want. So to do that I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to just quickly draw it around the main design area and just go up a little touch there like so. Mainly to those little stitched embossed lines around the edge. Then I can select both by dragging around open my modify panel and click crop and that's now not as distracting i'm going to zoom in a little and now we're going to make it even more workable because we're going to remove some of this white space and to do that rather than a specific shape we're going to draw our own shape and we're going to use a tool called draw a curve shape and with this you click and you'll get a dot and then a line and then you keep clicking and as you go around the line curves and follows whatever it is you're trying to isolate and when it comes to the tree i'm just going to do it quite roughly and you Go around your design, whatever it is, just making the best selection that you can that you think will look all right. Now, this will probably take me a couple of minutes. I'm just going to scroll down. So I'll speed this up until I'm nearly at the end. When I come to the end, if I get near my original starting point, you can see that my shape snaps together and closes and I can just click once and I've got my finished shape. And then it's really a case of tidying it up. This isn't necessary to tidy up, but I do tend to like to make it tidy. For that, we can do select the line and double click and we'll open something called point editing just need to move things around a little there we go and point editing means that we can click each of these gray dots and edit them when it's a thicker red line like this that means it's active and i can choose something from this menu so I might choose make flat 
and it makes it go nice and flush to the side and I can do the same with this although that's the wrong one it's this one I want to click make that and then I've got an extra one there so I'm going to delete it and this one will bring in a little bit closer and you can spend as long as you like editing to make a really good finish I'm not going to spend ages on it because I don't really need to so for now let's say that that's done and select them both again and let's click crop and you can see I've now removed a lot of that white space and we can manipulate the image even more the next thing I want to do is move the dog a little closer to the tree and we can use another tool that I don't use very often it's the knife tool and for this it works well because it's just a little piece that I need to do and I want to do it freehand for this and it's mainly because I want to just cut along the grass but in such a way that because of the watercolour it doesn't look as though I've done it so if I just wiggle my way down like so that's now split this into two I can move the dog independently of the tree but at the moment it's behind the tree so let's use our bring to front command and now it's in front and now I can position my dog next to the tree as close as I want I think that will probably be about right there we go and then I can draw around both of them and group them together group selected shapes that means it moves as one I'm now going to resize this and I'm going to use my scale over here I'm going to keep my proportions and I want to rescale it to 3.5 inches wide and you can see that it's done the height in proportion and now I've got a nice little image that I can start using to make my stickers so my next thing would be to decide what size sticker and I went for one because of the height of this I decided let's make one that's two by three inches so I'm going to draw a rectangle if I put snap to grid on I can start in my grid and you can see it sort of jumps in nice fixed increments and I can do a two by three square and I know that I want to go over where needed um, with colour so that I don't get a white edge where I don't need it so I'm going to do the offset and I'm going to make square edges I'm going to change the line colour to blue so that I can see it in fact I'll turn the grid off for the moment so we can see it easier and take the inset down when you're cutting with an actual electronic machine you don't need a very big offset at all because the blade of course will get quite close so something like 0.4 or 0.3 is usually enough even if you decide that you're cutting these by hand i would still say you only need a small offset because then you know when you cut just inside that you're not making it much bigger than your actual desired size so once that's done I can click apply and then I like to keep one of my images intact in case I ever make a mess of anything and let's move our image over here let's send it backward so that it's behind our lines and send it backward is obviously not working so instead let's bring our lines 
forward. There we go. It's a bit temperamental sometimes. And now I need to resize so that this fits. And we could do that with the corner. If you drag from the corner, it will keep everything in proportion. And if I drag from this corner, remember I want to be just to the edge of the blue line. That's why I've left it there, just to give me an idea. And I'm going to lose a bit of the tree, but that won't matter. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can see I'm at the blue edge there. Yeah, I think that will be just fine. There we go. This time, of course, I want to crop to that blue edge. So if I can, I want to try and get this red one out of the way. Now, it can be a bit tricky getting a thin line when it's over another image. You always end up picking something else up, but there we go, I've managed it. So then we would do what we did before. We would draw around both and click crop. But if I do that, you'll notice something strange happens. The dog disappears <laughs> and then he's got his little black tail over here somehow. I can't explain why this happens. It will be all to do with the order that we've done the shapes in. And because this isn't one image now, but two grouped together, it behaves differently. So we need to ungroup our tree from our dog. So we'll select ungroup. So now I can just click around the tree and the blue line and click crop. And now I've got a nice edge there. Now on this side over here, I've lost my line of course now, but I know that it didn't overlap far very much there at all. So I'm actually going to say that this is good enough. And now I can group the selected shapes back together, pick up my red line, bring it to the front, and then line these up and you can use center for that because we know that that will give us a nice edge and you can see that when it cuts it will still have color where it needs it and you can see that if my cutting is off by any chance by a couple of millimeters I've got enough color around here that I won't end up with white where I don't want it. That's all that is to it. The rest of making this sticker is all about sizes and adding any text or other decoration. So let's skip to the ones that I made earlier and zoom in a little. You can see I've got the plain one here and one with some text and one with some more text and another funny little way of cutting it in case you don't want all this extra space. And I did this cut line just like you saw me do the original one around the tree and the dog and the moon, just by clicking where I thought it might look nice and tidying it up with point editing. One quick mention about font sizes. Knowing what size font to use can be problematic because of course we can zoom in on our screens and of course what looks good on our screen and big enough to read might look a lot more different when it's actually printed. There is no hard and fast rule how to do this because every font is different and I can show you that quickly. If we go into here and let's just find um, any font. I've got one called Beverse. So let's try Beverse. Okay. And let's say we're going to do this at 24 points. And I don't want a line, but we do need to be able to see it. So let's do a fill of black and pick up our text tool. And let's just type the word 
quiet. So that's at 24 points in a font called Beverse. Now let's pick another font and we'll pick, um, what should we pick? Just about anything. Um, should we go for something called Salty Sea? And we'll do this at 24 and do the same word. So both of those are 24 points, but you can see that they are quite different. And you'll find this with a lot of fonts. And so it'll be a lot of times that you'll be limited by the amount of space as to how big your font can be. But you do still need to make it readable and sometimes you won't be able to use a font that you really want to in a small space because it will be unreadable when it's printed. A quick way, well a relatively quick way, once you get your eye in it's a lot easier, is to put your grid on. And remember my grid is one inch because I just like working in inches and I've got eight divisions, but it's the inch that means the most. So let's just take that down to no division. So now I know this grid is one inch. So if I put my word quiet there, I know it's literally just over an inch. And salty C is just over half an inch, maybe three quarters. But how do you know that this inch here is actually an inch if you look at it in your hand? Let's put the grid on. I'm going to take the divisions down to one and now we know that that square there is an inch. So if I put this in here we can see that that one's just over an inch and this one's probably about three quarters of an inch. But how do I know which ones I'd be able to read easily? One trick that I learned a long time ago is to look at the inch on your screen here and using a ruler or a tape measure against the screen in front of you, see if your inch on the screen matches the inch on your ruler. And when it does, you know that what you're looking at is what it would look like printed, because it's very deceptive when you're zoomed out like this to think this is what it looks like, but it doesn't because this isn't an actual inch. So. Make your square match as near to an inch as possible. You might not be able to get exact, it doesn't matter, as long as it's within this limit. And then you can check any font for the size so that you can see if it's going to be readable. So once you've added your text and such things, it's time to set this up for printing and cutting. And I've decided to put all the print and cut information into one video and you'll be able to find that on this channel at the end of the series. But in the next video we're going to look at drawing a doodle. I'll see you there.